Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. So today I'm going to talk about the importance of heroes and the importance of who for a society creates or retells the stories of heroes. And I'm doing that in light of the events over the last week, which of course from last week was the attempted assassination of Donald Trump, the attempted assassination of a former president of the United States, the attempted assassination of someone running for president of the United States. And oh, by the way, I would just ask you right off the bat to please share this video. Why? Because I'm not pussyfooting around with this video. I don't care. I'm using language that YouTube really won't like. So it's probably not going to get out very far. And very quickly, I just want to say that I'm not going to do my normal spiel to try to sell my own graphic novels. I'll just say links for them are in the description because that is in part what I'm talking about. In part, I want to emphasize the fact that we need better people to tell heroic stories right now. But let's get back to that. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this, or really one of the reasons why I want to talk about this, is because a lot of people over the last year, maybe two years, maybe even more, have started to say, well, you know what? I'm just tired of this. I don't want to fight about this anymore. It's not worth my time to do so. And I'm here to say, yeah, yeah, it is worth your time to do so. Why? Because if we let villainous people create and write our heroes, this is what we get. And by the way, as a student of history and a student of politics, I would say right now, right here, you need to fight. Why? Because this is not the end. This is the beginning. And I don't know how many of you were surprised when you heard the news about the attempted assassination of Donald Trump, where he missed being assassinated by literally half an inch, so much so that you could not make a story and sell it as a plausible story in the way that it actually happened. But I'll let you know that I was not shocked at all. I was literally sitting down reading. I had unplugged for my Saturday. I was relaxing. And what does that look like for RJ? Well, I was sitting down reading a natural law interpretation of Thomas Aquinas and how it fits into modern philosophy. And yes, my Saturday nights are quite a party. And then my phone rang and a friend of mine was on the other side and we talked just banter for a couple of seconds. And he said to me, do you have the news on? And I said, no, why? What did Joe Biden do now? Because I was half joking. And he said, no, that's not it. And you want to know what my second go-to was? I said, why? Did they assassinate Trump? And he said, turn on the news. That's how not shocked I was. It was my second guess after I stopped being funny. And why was it my second guess? Well, because I have been covering for the last six years how we now have villainous people in control of telling heroic stories. Now, I'm sure many people might not see that as being something terribly traumatic, something terribly important. They would point to the fact that the news media have been demonizing Donald Trump and his supporters, calling them Nazis for years now. That is where we need to focus on and try to fix that. Or we have other more important celebrities, musicians, movie stars talking about how Trump is Hitler and you need to go punch a Nazi. And while I think those things are important. I also think that on that level of importance is the fact that we have these exact same people, once again, these villainous kinds of people writing our stories about heroes, so-called writing stories about heroes. I usually go back to the ancient ideas that underscore our entire civilization, going back to Aristotle or Plato. And the thing is that when I go back to Plato and go back to his seminal work, which is his laws, many people might think it's the Republic, but that was done early on in his life. But the laws was his second crack at the idea of how men can create the best society. And it was done when he was much older. And this is his seminal work. And I would say the seminal book of that work is book five. And what does he do in book five? Well, he lays down the laws for that society, which can be the best society that mankind can create. And after he does that, he lays down the laws which each individual should make unto themselves to be just and good and noble and live in that society. But what is the third thing that he covers in that book? The third thing he covers in that book is who can tell stories and what kind of stories they should tell, especially when dealing with what we would consider mythology, which is the stories of gods and heroes. And what I'm going to do for the majority of this video is to go over some of the things that I've gone over in the past in my channel and some newer things to give you a snapshot of the kind of people 
that are in charge of telling our heroic story right now in our society, or who have control over what is essentially the new mythology for America. And that's how they see it. I talk about, every once in a while, this interview that was done with the second-in-command at Marvel Comics, which I covered at the first of my channel six years ago. She is the vice, or was the vice president of content and character development, and she says that in this interview with, I think it's Fast Company, which I do believe is still up on YouTube. My covering it is still up on YouTube. But she says that exact thing. She says superheroes are the new mythology. And then she goes on to talk about how those superheroes should push positive ideas. And by positive, she means progressivism, quote unquote, progressivism. And the point is that this progressivism is evil. Now, I won't call these people evil because I think that lets them off the hook. No, they're not evil. They're villainous. They're vicious. Those two words have the exact same word origin. Because I'm always talking about heroes and what a hero is. And traditionally, within Western civilization, for thousands of years, a hero is a paragon of virtue, an exemplar of virtue. But what does vicious mean? Where does the word villain come from? Well, they come from, again, the same origin of someone being vicious. Vicious is the exact opposite of virtue. And although I never talk about these people as villains, as paragons of vice, why? Because you can't be a paragon of something which is a lack of a good state. So I always talk about them in terms of being steeped in vice, because that's the exact thing. These people are villainous. These people are steeped in vice. And again, what do I mean by that? Well, a hero is a true hero because he's a paragon of virtue. And how do you become a paragon of virtue? You incorporate the habit of virtue into your everyday life so much so that it pervades everything that you do. And so it is the opposite with villains and these villainous people. They surround themselves with choices of vice. And so vice becomes their go-to because it pervades their everyday life. These people are vicious. These people are villainous. Not because they're evil, but because when given a choice, they choose evil. And they choose evil because it is their habit to do so, because they surround themselves with vice. It is their habit in life, and in part, they are allowed to have that habit because we allow them to be vicious people. What kind of vicious people? How? Well, they run the gamut. Let's go over a few of them. How's about Mark Wade, who has been a big name in comic storytelling for decades now? When he heard about the attempted assassination of a former president of the United States, a man running for president of the United States, what did he put on his social media? Well, he said, if you're just tuning in, some effing idiot with shitty eyesight just clinched the election for Trump. And I think it doesn't take a whole lot of inference to see that why is he talking about his poor eyesight? Why? Because he didn't want him to miss. This is the choice of evil. Again, I'm a student of history. What we narrowly avoided by half an inch one week ago, as far as I'm concerned, and a lot of other people are concerned, is the equivalent of the assassination that started World War I. And these people are wishing for it. That is a villainous, vicious person who chooses evil. And some people are saying, well, Mark Wade has always been a bit mentally unhinged. What can you expect from such a person? Well, I'm saying right now, he's mentally unhinged because he has chosen evil over and over again. Because that is his pattern, his habit of acting. Because he's been allowed to do so. Another example would be what I'm showing you in the background. And this is not a new image. This is an image of Trump as Modoc. If you don't know MODOK from those Marvel stories, typically MODOK is an acronym for either mechanical or mobile or mechanized organism designed only for killing. Although when this image came out, they changed that slightly because they're in an alternate universe of one of the main characters within Marvel Comics right now. I think it was a Spider-Gwen, Gwen Stacy book from 2021, where they switched up the acronym to mean Mental organism designed as America's king. But nonetheless, they present Trump as Modoc, a machine made for killing. Whereas, of course, they praised Obama like he was the second coming, made comics where he was the friend of superheroes, that vice president from Marvel Comics of content and character development, who was essential in creating a Spider-Man comic that had Obama on the cover, and then she 
got to introduce Obama. She has a tweet, a pinned tweet on her Twitter page, holding up that book with Obama on the cover. And that pinned tweet has been there since 2016. Not to mention the fact that we had someone in the mainstream media, Joy Reid, if you know her from MSNBC, who just did an interview. And oh, by the way, she's one of those people who routinely in the news media calls Trump Hitler. But in her casual attire, what was she wearing? She was wearing a Superman shirt, but it wasn't Superman. It was Obama as Superman. So yeah, these things are important. These things are corrupted by these villainous people. These things are used to portray someone who simply does not agree with their politics as if they were Hitler, as if they were Modoc, which is, again, a machine designed for killing, who wants to be king of America. These people are insane. And again, insane in the way that they are villainous and vicious, because they're not driven by something that controls them. They're driven by something that they have chosen, because they choose evil over and over again. How's about another example of G. Willow Wilson, the co-creator of Miss Marvel, who also worked on Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman? I covered an interview from her during Trump's last presidency. It was an interview with, if I remember correctly, the New York Times, where she, first of all, refused to say his name, and secondly, said that she got into writing because she wanted to change the world. But when, as she says, the current administration came into the White House, she shifted gears so that her entire reason for writing was to oppose the administration in the White House, to oppose Donald Trump. And as she goes further on to say, so that she could provide for people who are opposed to him, politicians especially, a safe haven, a bulwark, where they could retreat to and gain what she calls hope fuel, and then go back in and take over or take back any lost territory to this man. These people are deranged. First of all, and this is not an uncommon thing, they will not even say the man's name, as if it were Voldemort or the Dark One from the Wheel of Time, as if he were demonic. These people are insane. And again, insane because they choose that. They are villainous. And you gotta remember, first of all, I'm not saying Trump is the second coming in any way, but the thing is that they treat this man as if he were demonic when he's barely even conservative. He might be slightly right of center, but that's it. And they refuse to say his name. They do things like take their entire career and center it around opposing him. These people are villainous. These people are vicious. These people are insane. I'll give you another example. How's about Eric Larson, the person in control of Image Comics? Someone who tweeted, back in 2022, the following message. He said, Donald Trump being executed for treason on the White House lawn is the closure America needs to start the healing process. These people are villainous. Oh, and not to mention he's again one of these comic creators who like to slap Obama or Biden and Kamala Harris on his comic covers and praise them uncritically, but puts Donald Trump on his comic covers and in his comic stories as being the villain. Although it's really no big shocker about Eric Larson. Here's someone who put an underage girl in bondage gear on one of his covers and has his superhero talking about his sexual fetishes. Yeah, these people are steeped in vice. These people are villainous because again, they choose to do the evil thing. They willfully surround themselves with vice. And what does it lead to? Well, it leads to calling for the assassination of a former president of the United States as a healing action. These people are insane. And I could go on and on, but let me just give you one more example. How's about Gene Yang? Typically, he works over at DC writing such superheroes as Superman, who was the driving force behind recreating that 1930s radio serial from Superman called Superman Smashes the Clan. He did a book about it, but when he did the book about it, this faux clan that you have that Superman is fighting against, who are they portrayed as? Well, they're portrayed as Republicans, which, if you know anything about history, is the exact opposite of what actually happened because these clan members and their institution as such came from the Democratic Party. But he also went on a screed on Twitter wherein he said, that either you're for 
tolerance or for blood and soil. And what does that mean? Well, he defined tolerance earlier on in his Twitter thread, defined it not as tolerance is actually defined as the putting up with something offensive. No, tolerance, he defined it as the basic principles of progressivism. So either you're a progressive or you're for blood and soil. And what is blood and soil? Well, it's an old Nazi reference. So he was underhandedly saying, you're either a progressive or you're a Nazi. And again, this is a man who writes Superman. These people are villainous. These people surround themselves in vice. These people choose evil. And I wanted to end with that example because of the very fact of what he does within Superman Smashes the Klan. He takes Klan members, and oh, by the way, there's actual literal Nazis in that book at the very first of the story arc, again, equating that kind of person with the Klan members and then equating the Klan members and what they do with Republicans. And the reason why I wanted to stop there is because, as I said at the first of this entire thing, what you saw last weekend with the attempted assassination of Donald Trump was not the end. It is the beginning. If you know anything about history, the last time something like this really happened, which is really an equation with what we have right here today, because it was the last time there was a great transfer of ideas from, at that time, a conservative mindset to a liberal mindset of what we have for the last 60 years was in the 1960s, was with the assassination of JFK. And they actually managed to kill JFK, whereas they didn't manage to kill Donald Trump. But the thing was, that didn't stop the violence. That didn't stop the assassinations. That didn't stop the executions. That started them. And that, again, is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video. I don't want to scare people, but I want people to be vigilant. Why? Because, again, they did not manage to kill the person that they see as demonic, the person they see as Hitler, the person whose death they would have cheered for. And since I would say security has been beefed up to a nth degree around Donald Trump right now, they're not going to get a second chance. Maybe they will, but I don't think they will. And so what are they going to do? Well, they're going to go for smaller targets. And that might mean other people within the Republican Party. But honestly, since they equate you and I with Nazis as well, anybody, anybody who even remotely supports Trump in their minds is a Nazi. Who in their minds are worthy of just the exact same fate as Donald Trump? Well, in my estimation, that's probably their next likely target. And when I say they, I simply mean this amorphous mass of people who are villainous and vicious in this way. Quite honestly, after I learned that this assassination attempt had failed, what was the go-to in my mind? Within an hour after that, the go-to was, well, now they're going to try improvised explosive devices, most probably around the crowds that support this man. And then what we have within this last week, discovery that this would-be assassin had what in his car? Well, he had improvised explosive devices. Quite honestly, and again, I say this not to scare people, not to scare people away, but hopefully to make you vigilant and make the people who deal with security vigilant, because I do know a couple of people who are high-level security. But when this whole thing starts to go south, I honestly think, come election day in November, you're going to see some of these polling stations which have abysmal security simply be taken out. As far as I'm concerned, that's probably what they're going to desperately move to so that they can claim that this election was not fair and then both sides can claim victory. And I know, I know, that sounds like the plot of a supervillain, but that's the point. These people are villains. But why am I saying all this? Why am I hammering this point home? What am I telling you to do? Well, at the high end, I'm saying in order for you to counter these people who are vicious, villainous, full of vice, who surround themselves with the choices of evil, you need to become heroic. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your life looks like. Surround yourself with virtue. This is the time to heed the call of being heroic, of being virtuous, of doing what is right. But at the very absolute barest minimum, I'm saying that if you haven't already, you need to recognize that these people are villainous. You can't just say, oh, they have a different political opinion than me. No, they're villains. They choose evil. 
You can't just say, oh, I separate the artist from the art. No, these people, they choose evil. They promote evil. They put out stories over and over again to demonize you. And I don't care who you are. You could be slightly left of center. They're still demonizing you. That is their bread and butter and has been so for over a decade now. And they want chaos. They want destruction. They want that bullet to be moved over an inch so that it hit its target. And if that target becomes elusive to them, you become their target. And if that doesn't get you off your ass and actually recognize that you have a dog in this fight, then I don't know what will. All right, I'll leave it there. Bye.